What's good, YouTube? Happy Sunday. Real quick one for you today, guys. I'm just going to run down my Twitter feed looking at Grant Cardone. I do like Grant Cardone. And he's saying the American dollar is a big scam. He says that in his lifetime, a $100 bill has lost 96% of its purchasing power. That's hard to believe. Um, now, he did do a math. Uh, looks like he got his math mixed up here, which is very understandable. He said that it's only worth four cents. I think he means four dollars if it's lost 96 percent but <laughs> we can't fault them for that by the way guys um if you're worried about inflation use it to your advantage most people uh who are worried about inflation don't understand it's a two-way street that means for most americans this is going to shock you guys but for most americans inflation is is their best friend why because most americans are in debt and inflation is good for people who have debt because it's devaluing your debt uh, liability. So the same inflation that makes assets lose their purchasing power is the same inflation that's making your debt easier to pay off. Why? Because you're paying it off in nominal dollars. So if you, for instance, went into debt for, let's say, $100 uh, you know, 20 years ago, and now that $100 is only worth $4, well, that means to pay off your $100 debt, you only need $4. So make sure you're using inflation to your advantage, guys. You know, think two ways. You have to think bi-directional. This is a very important thing I learned from Warren Buffett in that, you know, sometimes it's good to be a business owner, and sometimes it's good to be a customer. Sometimes it's good to purchase a home, and sometimes it's better to rent. I actually wanted to talk about renting real quick, guys, real quick. I'm going to run through this video as fast as I can. You know, someone said, you know, renting, a lot of people say this, renting is a waste of money. Uh, you're, just, you're just giving your money to the landlord. Well, when you're in debt uh, for a house, which is called a mortgage, instead of paying a landlord, you're just paying the bank. And guess who owns the bank? Uh, people who own stocks. People who own stocks in the bank. So while I'm renting, I'm investing in the stock market. And a great, a good portion of, of my investments are in uh, banks, bank equity. So don't be so sure, guys, when you're paying your mortgage. And by the way, you're not building equity until the very, very end of your mortgage. The bank is getting their cut first. And that means stock holders are getting your mortgage payment. That means, you know, the person who's renting, like me, is receiving dividends from you. So don't be so sure, guys. Don't be so sure. People are finding out that the cost of owning a home is, is very expensive. You have to buy all the furniture. You have to buy all the appliances. There's all the taxes. There's all the repairs. There's all the maintenance. There's all the yard work. There's the HOA fees. I don't have to deal with any of that. So make sure you're thinking both directions. Don't always fall for the news. I, I heard a very good quote, guys, um, that if you watch the news, you're convinced that it's never been worse. But if you study history, you're convinced that it's never been better. Make sure you're studying history. That's why they want to steal that history from us, guys. You notice how every year they're erasing more and more history and they're rewriting it in a very negative light to make it sound very unfair. History has been very unfair to you. It's not your fault. Come, come to daddy government and we'll make everything better. We just need more of your freedom. We're just going to, you don't, you're not using that freedom anyway. You don't like that freedom of speech stuff, do you? You don't like that because, you know, your neighbor said something you disagree with and we're going to punish them. We're going to punish people who are questioning the validity of, of the vaccines. We're going to punish those people. We, we don't want people asking questions around here. So just be careful what you're wishing for, guys. Be careful what you're supporting. Staying on this topic of currency devaluation, um, you know, here's another great example. Ten of these would buy you a home in 1929. Ten of these will buy you a home in 2024. Now we're looking at one kilogram gold bars. Okay, so who cares about inflation if you're investing your money? 
if you're if you bought gold bars now of course you couldn't really do that in 1929 or if you did then the government was getting ready to confiscate it very quickly after that but if you're investing your money uh, i don't care about inflation inflation is good for investors because you're owning businesses that are going to profit from that inflation remember inflation only hurts one kind of person that really doesn't exist the only person who's hurt by inflation is the the person who's storing money under their mattress who's storing physical fiat currency in a coffee can and hiding that in their cupboard that's the only person who's being hurt by inflation most people don't have any money to worry about most people are in debt or they're investing you want to keep your fiat currency low okay i keep a little bit in the bank but guess what i'm earning five percent interest on that so i don't care i'm still coming out net positive because my interest payments received is greater than inflation Let's stay on inflation a little bit longer guys what is a good rate of inflation this is a very good chart that's showing the highs and lows. I've never seen a chart like this. Uh, this is called a, a wedge pattern. And I've seen this for stock prices, but I've never seen this for inflation. But this is showing that the true uh, neutral rate of inflation is actually 3.2%. Whereas the Federal Reserve has been targeting 2.1% it actually looks like it's closer to 3.2%, which is actually pretty much where we're at right now, surprisingly enough. So maybe everything is exactly the way it should be. Maybe we have hit uh, the, the, neutral, the neutral rate, and the Federal Reserve targets a half a percentage point above this rate, which would put the federal funds rate at 3.7%, which is actually below where we're at right now so that could give the federal reserve a case for cutting interest rates very soon we don't know they may uh, decide that the actual target rate is 3.2 percent not 2.1 percent as they said this is uh, another little tweet about gold that's just showing a lot of the buying is coming from china and um, uh, if you haven't seen, there's, have you seen these little pictures of these gold beans? So people in China are investing in these little beans of gold. And that's how they're buying gold. Uh, people in China are, are waking up. They're, they're, their economy is much different than ours. And their stock market is much different than ours. The government is very controlling, very heavy-handed in their stock market. And they've done... Uh, a lot of damage to their economy and to their stock market. So people in China are buying gold, which is exactly what we should be doing. Here's a cool one, guys. A little throw you a curveball right here. This is the new Tesla car. Now, this looks pretty good, guys. I am not a fan of Tesla, to be honest with you. And I think the Cybertruck looks pretty uh, stupid, if you ask me. But this is kind of taking that same theme and putting it in a car design and I actually think that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. That looks pretty tough. And uh, not that I would get one necessarily, but I think that's the best design I've seen out of them. And I hope they make that. I hope they do because that is a tough looking vehicle. Silver got a confirmed breakout. Now, this is what we were talking about earlier. And a lot of you thought I was joking. And guys, I'm not joking. Okay, I'm being dead serious with you. We looked at this pattern down here earlier this cup and handle pattern this is not a joke this is real uh i went through explaining it all but y'all can't seem some of you can't seem to understand well here it is from a different account with their own chart and it's the exact same thing and they're calling for an initial target of 160 dollars guys now look at this same cup and handle okay this is the cup this is the handle we explained it this is from this is just showing a cycle from bull to bear to bull so this is called price discovery and we're seeing the range of sentiment in the cup formation then the handle is called a consolidation period 
where the range is getting much tighter. This is all price discovery. Remember, things are only worth what people are willing to pay for them. So that's what investing is all about. It's about buyers and sellers. There's not like some government agency setting the price on silver. It's just buyers and sellers. So remember, I got into precious metals 11 years ago. So all I've ever seen from silver is this negative consolidation period. But silver is breaking out right now. I don't know if you can see where my mouse is right here. This, right here, this little green bar, you see where it's breaking out right here? Guys, this is the beginning of a massive, massive once-in-a-lifetime move in silver. And this guy is calling for a hundred. Now, he says 160 in his tweet, but here it looks closer to... Um, no, okay, I see where he's getting that from. $162. And he's getting that from the previous price range. Now, remember, this is a bit optimistic. And I'm, I think more like, you know, in the 60 to 80 range is, is more appropriate. I, let me see $60. Let's just worry about $60 first. But he's calling for $160 because that's the range of movement we saw here on the left side of the cup. And he's just moving that forwards and saying that if we did that from the bottom to the top here, that would put us at $160. I mean, it's not it's not impossible. I'll say that. It's not impossible, but very optimistic. I'm calling for closer to $60. This is just more of that silver breakout. And you can see that it, it, the silver has broken out of this resistance level right here. And the volume is very high. That's very important. A lot of people ignore volume. Volume is actually more important than the price action because volume is showing uh, confidence. It's showing how strong this movement is. A very weak move would, had, would have low volume, but a very um, high amount of volume is showing a very strong move. It's, it's a lot of trading volume involved. This is another thing right here that shows resistance, and you're seeing that once we get past this point, guys, it is blue sky horizon. There's nothing stopping us after this. This is blue sky right here. This is just uncharted territory. What else do we have, guys? Um, nice little picture of gold right here. Nice little picture of gold. And this guy is calling for $50,000 an ounce gold. Now, guys, that's a little bit silly, I think. Um, <laughs> Let's say my price targets are currently $3,000 for gold by the end of the year, $60 for silver by the end of the year. That means silver could uh, basically double from where we're at, more than double from where we're at right now. So, guys, uh, I've never been more bullish on silver than I am right now, and I am a buyer at these prices. That's all I have for you today, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Take care.